Thank you for joining us today. If you want to stay up to date on all the mobile tech that's coming out and learn cool tips, tricks, and hidden features, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and tap the bell to turn on post notifications so you can be alerted every time we post new videos. We're going to walk you through the new interface on the Fitbit Versa 2 and just some basics of how to navigate it because the operating system has slightly changed. Okay, so we're going to start with just basic navigation. So um, swiping to the right won't take you anywhere, but swiping to the left will take you to the different apps that are on the Fitbit. So obviously we have exercise app, timer, now we have Spotify built in and your alarms. Keep swiping. We have um, some new relaxed feature settings, music, and weather. And then here you'll find any other apps that you have downloaded on the Fitbit. And I'll go over a little later in the video actually how you download apps and where you go to do that. And yeah, so just swiping all the way that way just takes you to the different apps that are on the phone. Now, when you're on the main screen here, you can swipe up and this will take you to a full breakdown of your day, how many steps you've done, and you can see, you know, everything from how many hours you were active to your active heart rate, sleep, exercise schedule, and you can adjust this if you hit settings right here, you can uh, select what um, things you want to show up in this section. So if you track your food, you can have that show up. If you track your weight daily, you can have that and your different badges. It's all up to you how you want that set up. We hit the button on the side here. It will take us back to our home screen. Now, if I swipe down from the top here, this is how I can see all the different notifications that have come through the phone. So I can see a missed call. I have an email here that came through and I can actually tap on that email and I can look at it in more detail if I want. You can hit open. It'll then open right on my phone or I can simply archive it or just clear it and clearing it will just take it right off of my notifications on the Fitbit. So I can just hit clear and now when I swipe down, it won't show up in that section. Under missed calls, I can tap on that and I can hit call back and then it will trigger the call on my phone or I can hit message and here I can uh, pick from some pre-selected options here. I can tap an emoji to reply or you can tap more replies here. Okay, so now we're just gonna hit the home button to go back. Now also when you swipe down, we have a new set of menus. These are called your quick settings here. It's, you gotta pay attention because it'll move away quick. But these three are the quick settings. So you have a shortcut to music, to uh, making a payment. So if you wanted to pay for something using your Fitbit, you just swipe down and tap that second button. The third options are those quick settings right there. So if I tap quick settings, we have these five options here. So I can turn on do not disturb. And now no notifications will come through or make my wrist vibrate or make any noise. I can turn on the sleep mode, which will also disable any notifications coming through so I can sleep. I can turn on what's called always on display. And in this setting, you'll always have a clock face on the Fitbit. So if I turn the screen off, this is now what's called the always on display. So no matter what, it will always show the time on my wrist, which is kind of cool. Now. Keep in mind, if you do have the always on feature uh, on, uh, the battery does drain faster. So when I did a test, I was able to get about two and a half to three days with the always on clock. When I turned this off, I was able to get up to five days worth of battery life. So it's up to you how often you want to charge this thing. Um, I like this feature, but I like more not having to charge it, but once, maybe twice a week. So that's why I decided to turn it off. Swipe down again, tap on the quick settings. You could just turn it off that easy. Here we have our brightness level and we could change it to max, normal, or to dim. Obviously, if you put it on dim, the battery will also last a lot longer. I think when I got over five and a half days of battery, I had it on just the dim setting, but it's up to you and how you see and, and what uh, is more convenient for you. 
here. This is the screen wake. Now what screen wake is, is when the Fitbit is on your wrist and you turn your wrist, the screen will automatically come on. You can turn that off so that, so if you put it on manual, the screen will only turn on when you press the button. By turning your wrist, it won't trigger the clock. However, you can tap that and tap this and put it on automatic. And with automatic, the screen will come on whenever you flick your wrist over. And the last thing I want to show you is how to trigger the Alexa. So the Fitbit Versa 2 does have the Alexa uh, voice assistant built in. And just by holding down on the home button here for about one second, it'll automatically trigger Alexa to start listening and then you can make a request. So let me show you how it works. Set a timer for two minutes. So just that easy, I can, you know, tell it to set a timer or do something like that and it will get started. So in terms of using this with my workouts, it's been awesome because um, it's great to be able to just set something without having to manually do it yourself. The cool thing too is in this section, you are able to control your other Alexa enabled devices. So now I'm gonna segue over to the app because in the app is where you're gonna have a lot more of your controls in terms of changing your clock phase and making more adjustments to what you see on your Fitbit. So here we are in the Fitbit app here. Now to get this on your phone or tablet, it's really easy. You're just gonna go to the App Store or the Google Play Store, download the Fitbit app, you will need to uh, open the app and create an account with Fitbit and then sign in and then go through the pairing process of connecting your Fitbit, which is just turning it on, turning the Bluetooth on your phone on, and then that will put it in the pairing mode for the two to link up. Once they're linked, you can see all your Fitbit stats through the app as well. And then by Making adjustments to the Fitbit, you'll need to go to your profile icon in the upper left corner, tap on that, come down to your Fitbit here, Fitbit, so here, Versa 2. And this is the screen where you really make a lot of the modifications. So for example, if you want to, if you want to change the clock face, you're gonna tap on clock faces. This will take you to the Fitbit store where you'll be able to download different watch faces and you'll find a ton in here. So all kind of options here now. So I'm going to just tap on one really quickly because I want to go over this with you. There's a couple of different things you're going to see when you click on a watch face. You'll either see this, which is um, the select option. And when you see select, it means that this is a 100% free clock face. There won't be any charges to use it. And here are the different uh, options you have in terms of the colors, right? So now I'm going to click on a different watch face, just so you can see that some of them are going to look a little different. So when I tap on this one, right here, there's a disclaimer that says this item may require payment which is solely managed by the developer. If you ever see that, it's telling you that this clock face is not free. So you would hit select to download it. And once it shows up on your Fitbit, there's a code that's gonna show up that you have to enter that you'll use to purchase that clock face. So just keep in mind, if you ever see this card and this disclaimer, it's not a free clock face. They're not expensive. They will range anywhere from a dollar to $10 and up. Um, but either way, just be aware. I found a bunch and was disappointed when I realized that they weren't free. Again, if you go back to the ones that say buy Fitbit, all of these are always free and they don't even have the credit card disclaimer. And that's how you know this is one you can download. And these are really easy. You just hit select hit install. Once this finishes moving back and forth, then you are ready. It should automatically show up on your Fitbit screen. And here it is, the watch face has been installed. So just that easy, you can change the clock face just like that. If we go back, 
In this section, we'll find apps. This is where you can download different apps that will link up to your Fitbit. These are the ones I already have. Again, my apps. If you go to all apps, you can see everything that is available and there are a ton. Now the same rules apply. For example, if I tap on this one, or, well that one's already on the phone, but if I tap on, let's say this flashlight here, it just says install, really easy. But if I find another one, like Flappy Birds, for example. Oh, no, that's not one. So this Bitcoin app, for example, it has the credit card logo right at the bottom here, which is telling you this is not a free app. You will need to pay for it. So just be aware of those so that as you're going through trying to figure out what you want to download, you'll see that some are free and some aren't. You'll also have the media section here where you can um, control the different um, apps that will um, manage your music. I tend to like to use the Pandora option the most, but some people do like to set it up where they have their own music going through. So you would just tap personal music and that's how you can get that set up and linked together. Down here, you'll find some other options here, how to adjust notifications. And so what is your default text messaging app, default email app that will again come through and show you messages. You can enable what are called voice replies where you can tap a microphone and you can reply with your voice. I love that feature, I use that a lot. And you just have uh, some other controls. A very important one is gonna be app notifications. So in this section, you can go through and select specific apps that you want to receive notifications for and apps that you don't want to receive notifications. Uh, my advice to you is be very selective about what comes through. If you hit select all, your wrist will be vibrating all day because apps are constantly sending notifications. So I like to limit this to very specific apps that I look at every day and I wouldn't mind being alerted all the time when notifications come through. Just FYI. And that's it guys, this has been our video